Okay, so in this question we have a roller coaster which has a mass of 1,000 kilograms. It's the top of a hill of an unknown height. And that is the question. How high must the hill be? So if the roller coaster, when it goes down the hill and through this loop, and the loop has a radius of 10 meters, how high does the hill have to be so that the roller coaster can get through the loop without falling and sending everyone on the roller coaster to their own time of death? Okay, we're going to assume, of course, that there's no friction, um, and that's pretty necessary assumption because as it goes through the loop, the normal force will constantly be changing, the force of friction will constantly be changing, and without some good calculus, we would have a lot of trouble figuring out the total effects of all that friction. But obviously in real life, there would be some friction, um, which would have to be considered. But ideally, so this is really the minimum height. It would have to be higher than that to make up for friction. So what do we do? Well, so it's sort of a conservation of energy problem, but there's also a bit of centripetal motion going on here. So first of all, I'm going to call the top of the height, the top of the hill, that's going to be 1. This is the top of the hill. So then what I'm calling V1 would be the velocity of the roller coaster at the very beginning, and that's going to be 0. So V1 equals 0, and height 1 is really what we're trying to find. The other position we're going to be interested in, and I'll call it position 2, is at the top of the loop. So that's V2, and that'll be H2 for the purposes of our conservation of energy. And the height of the loop is twice the radius of the loop, so that's going to be 20 meters. So what do we do? Well, we're going to lose potential energy, and that's going to cause us to gain kinetic energy, so we'll gain speed, and we want to have enough potential energy that we have enough speed to not fall off. So that's the real first question there. How much speed is required to keep this roller coaster from falling off? So we've got to look at the roller coaster while it's in the loop, and the question is, when would the roller coaster fall? And I hope you all understand that the most likely place, the first place it's going to fall, if it goes at the minimum speed, say all the way around, it would fall at the top, right? That's going to be the hardest place to keep it up. That's going to be the first place where it falls. So we'll draw a free body diagram of the roller coaster at the top. What forces are there? Well, there's gravity, which is down. And as it goes through the loop, there's also going to be the normal force. You might well be tempted to leave that off your diagram altogether because you already know, if the roller coaster falls, the normal force will be zero. I'm going to leave it on there for a second. Okay, so down towards the center is x, and my x equation is that fn plus fg equals ma. But it's going in a circle, so it equals mac, centripetal acceleration. Now the condition here, where it just falls, means that the normal force is going to become zero. And this formula, acceleration, do centripetal, centripetal acceleration is v squared over r. So I can see that mg will equal mv squared over r. Rearranging that, I get the velocity equals the square root of gr, which, plugging into my calculator, gives me 9.9, .9, basically, meters per second. So the roller coaster has to have a speed of 9.9 .9 meters per second. I've just called it v. But if I look back at the beginning of my problem, I'm saying the top of the loop is V2. So I'm going to call that V2, because that's what it is. It's the speed at the top of the loop. It has to be 9.9. Centripetal force is done. Now I'm going to look at the energy. So what is the energy at the top of the loop? What's the total mechanical energy of the roller coaster at position 2? Well, that's just the kinetic energy plus the potential energy. So that is a half m V2 squared plus mgh2, which is 20 meters. A half mv squared, I believe, is 49,000 joules. And mgh2 is 196 joules. Sorry, 196,000 joules. So adding those up, I get 245,000 joules. That's the total energy of the roller coaster at the top of the loop at position 2. And we know that the total mechanical energy can't change, right? If it has to have 245,000 joules at the top of the loop, it has to have 245,000 joules at the top of the hill. But at the top of the hill, it has no speed, right? So energy 1 is also Ek plus Ed. 
has no kinetic energy. So that's going to be mg h1. h1, the thing that we're looking for. Conservation of energy tells us that E1 must equal E2. So E1 must also be 245,000 joules. So 245,000 must equal the mass times G times H1. So H1 is 245,000 divided by 1,000 divided by 9.8 gives us 25 meters. Nothing very difficult by itself, but a couple of leaps to make. So you've got to understand the centripetal force part to find the speed required at the top. Then you've got to use conservation of energy. Knowing the speed and the height at the top of the loop, you can figure out the height of the individual. Problem. Okay, now we're going to do basically the same problem we just did, except I'm not going to give you nearly as much information. You may have noticed in the last question we were using our calculator a lot. I told you the mass was 1,000. We multiplied by 1,000 several times. We divided by 1,000, 9.8, all kinds of things. On this question, we're just going to say a roller coaster has to go through a loop. How much higher than the loop must the hill be that it started from? It's going to start again from rest, but it has an unknown mass m. Its initial velocity is zero. Height one is what we're trying to find. The velocity as it goes through the loop, we're going to need to find it. Height two, we don't know, but it will be 2r. It'll be twice the radius of the loop, which hopefully makes sense. Now we're going to go back to the free body diagram, the centripetal force. Where is it most likely to fall? It's most likely to fall at the top, right? That's where gravity is working totally towards the center of the circle. That's where gravity is providing, is completely helping the centripetal force. It's helping to turn this thing in a circle. So it's the first place that it's going to fall because the normal force is, is not needed as much as it is other places. It's never going to fall at the bottom. The normal force is always going to keep it turning. But at the top is where it'll fall. So Fn plus Fg are going to equal Mac. But if it falls, Fn equals zero. So we're going to find the speed where it just falls. So summing in here, we see for Fg that Mg must be equal to m v squared over r, and the mass doesn't matter, which is, of course, good. Rearranging, we can see that v squared equals gr. I'm just going to stop right there. I could say v equals the square root of gr, but I won't, because what do we care about that for? Well, the total energy, the energy at position 2, the energy at the top of the loop, is going to be the potential energy, mgh2, plus the kinetic energy, a half mv2 squared. This is, of course, v2, the velocity at the top of the loop. Subbing in there, I can see that it's mg times 2r plus a half mgr. That is energy 2. What's the energy at the initial spot, at the top of the initial hill? Well, that's energy 1. That's just the potential energy because it's not moving, all its energy must come from potential, so that's just mgh. Law of conservation of energy tells me that the energy at spot 1 must equal the energy at spot 2. We've got no friction, there's no non-conservative forces, nothing sucking energy out of the system. If it loses a certain amount of potential energy, it must gain the same amount of kinetic energy. So, summing these guys in, we can see that mgh1 must equal mg2r plus a half mgr. Now I can divide both sides by the mass, and it's gone. Every single term has a g in it. It doesn't matter how much mass the roller coaster has. Everything falls at the same rate due to gravity, right? The mass of the roller coaster is totally irrelevant. This planet that we're on is totally irrelevant. If you built a roller coaster on the moon, it might not achieve the same speeds but whether it fell or not would be the same, would be dictated by the same situation, whether it was high enough compared to its loop. It doesn't matter what planet you're on, it doesn't matter how much mass you have. Rearranging a little bit more, or finishing this off, we can see that h1 is 2r plus a half r, 2.5 times the radius. And that's our answer. The height of the first hill must be two and a half times as big as the loop to give it enough speed to get up to the height and have enough speed left over to actually make it through the loop. It's got to be two and a half times.